Okay. Um, any pain or injuries? Okay. All right. Good day, everyone. This is Stephen Chang coming to you live from 333 Grand in downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. Please give uh, uh, visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the hybrid schedule, which is in person here at 333 Grand, as well as through Zoom. You can register for class through ubindi.com. And if you are watching this on YouTube, classes are $10, and you can pay through Venmo or PayPal. Payment information on the bottom of the video, as well as my website simhayoga.com. Today's class is Intermediate Advanced Lab. It is a level two, level three. If you're working with any kind of special conditions or limitations, make sure that you do modify or skip poses altogether, making good decisions about your movement practice so that you don't create any injuries or perpetuate any injuries. Now, if your hips or your lower back are tight, please elevate sitting up on some blocks, some blankets, and that will make it easier for you to sit up tall with a lengthy spine. All right, palms face up. And fingers come to Gyana Mudra, thumb and index fingers touching. Grounding evenly through your seat, elongate through your spine. And let your inhales even out with your exhales. Three arms together, inhale. Um. Keeping the eyes closed, hands together in prayer on front of the heart. Pressing your thumbs into your heart, heart back into your thumbs. Lifting the heart up toward the sky. Setting your intention for yoga practice. Devoting your practice to someone or something or to yourself. Your supreme self that lives within your heart. Chanting the mantra for purification. Purifying the space in which you practice yoga. Call and response. Om Mapavitraha, Om Mapavitraha, Pavitrawa, Pavitrawa, Sarva Vushtan, Sarva Vushtan, Gato Piwa, Gato Piwa, Yaha Smarit, Yaha Smarit, Pundrikaksham, Pundrikaksham, Sapahya, Sapahya, Bihyandraha, Bihyandraha, Suchihi, Suchihi. Beginning to open the eyes, palms face up, inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, right ear to the right shoulder, right hand to the left side, elongate. And then chin toward the right shoulder. Release, back to center, drop the right hand, left ear to the left shoulder. Left hand to the right side. And then chin toward the left shoulder. Release back to center. Drop left hand. Chin toward the chest. Big circles with the head in one direction. Ear to one side. Roll it back. Opposite side. Roll it center. A few more rounds. And chin back toward the chest and pause. And then take in the opposite direction. And then chin back toward the chest, lifting the chin parallel to the floor and neutral spine. Extend the legs forward, separating your feet. And turning your toes toward each other, and then roll them out. Draw in. Roll out, draw in. Outer rotation, circling. Back to center, switch them around. And back to center again. Cross your shins, but take the opposite shin on top. 
non-dominant crossing of the legs. Inhale, arms up high and extend. Exhale, twist to the right. Back to center, arms up. Twist to your left. Back to center again. Side bends, right hand down, left arm overhead. Take it back up, other side. Back up again, legs forward, forward fold. Grabbing your feet, ankles, or your shins. Draw back in. Reach your right heel out to your side. Step the left foot down. And then let's twist to your left. Come back to center. Twist to the right. Roll to the outer of the right foot. Lift the feet and extend. Take the seat back down. Roll the toes back up to center. Right hand to grab the left ankle. And then side bending over your right leg and reach. If you have deeper extension, maybe bind the hand, uh, left hand to right foot. And start to release. Make your way back up. Draw the left heel back behind you. Right hand to your floor. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, folding forward. Inhale, make your way back up. Exhale, twist to your left. And then side bending here again. Over the right leg. Reach your left arm overhead and extend, either just reach overhead or binding left hand to the right foot. Inhale, release, take it back to center. Left leg extends out to the side. Hands to either side, outwardly, turn your fingertips behind you. Lift the sternum up, broaden your shoulders, gently looking upwards. Then come back to a more neutral spine, press into your fingers, lean the torso forward about halfway maybe. So it all depends on your flexibility. So um, continue to find that uh, neutral spine as you lean forward. Now, if you have a little more in you, you can walk your hands forward, re-lengthen and then gently crawl the fingertips forward in the next few breaths, incrementally make your way forward. Right, so you don't have to flatten all the way down, only as much as you are able to. All right, walk it back in. Keep the left leg extended, step the right foot down, and let's twist to the right. Come back to center, keep the legs, counter twist to your left. Release, roll to the outside of the left foot, left hand is behind you, lift and extend. Release, your seat back down, square back to center, skandasana. Take the left hand, grab the right ankle, side bending over your left leg. Reach your right arm overhead and just extending here. Or if you can bind the right hand to the left foot, go ahead and take it. Start to release. Make your way back up. Carry your right heel back behind you. Square over your left leg. Left hand to the floor, right arm up, inhale, exhale. 
draw forward for the forward fold. Release, make your way back up, twist to the right. Then side bending over your left leg again. Reach your right arm overhead and extend or binding the right hand to your left foot. Start to release, make your way back up. Carry your right leg out to the side. If you have a little bit more width in you, go a little bit wider. Okay? Again, outward rotation with your hands slightly behind you. Broaden your shoulders. Lift your sternum, gently looking up. And this time I'll give you a side view. And then pressing your fingertips to the floor. Lean the torso forward. All right, so go only as far forward as you can with a lengthy spine. Keep working there. Once you get a little bit more in you, your hands can move forward. And then again, incrementally, with a more neutral spine, work your way forward. And begin to make your way back up. With your hands to your inner knee, uh, inner thighs, above your knees, pull up and your knees will bend. Soles of feet together, knees apart. And with your hands supporting, let's butterfly your knees. All right, come back to stillness. Draw the heels in closer, Baddha Konasana. Grabbing the ankles, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Make your way back up. Left hand comes to the floor for support. Right hand gently pressing your inner right thigh away from you. So getting more openness, more length through the inner right thigh into the inner right hip uh, joint. Switch sides. Right hand comes down. Gently press your inner left thigh away. Release, uh, lift the knees up, take the heels um, about match with distance, pivoting to your heels, and let's windshield wipe your knees side to side. Okay, come back to center, draw the left heel in, right heel back. All right, so I'll face forward again. Creating a letter S with your legs, walk your hands over to left, supporting with your hands, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist, and bow forward halfway. And then inhale again. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper. Now, if you want to add on, your right hand can extend forward so that you're tractioning your fingertips to the floor and then getting lengthier through your right side as you rotate and fold. Walk it back to center. Lift back up and... Twist to the right. Back to center. Left hand comes down. Lift the seat. Raise your right arm up and across the collarbone. Back in space. Heart opener. Back bending. Raise your right arm up. Over the right ear. Side stretch. And then again, one more. Threading the needle. Right arm underneath and twist. Inhale, take it all the way back up to re-extend, and then take the seat down. Draw the left heel in closer, swing the right leg around, intersect the right heel to the left ankle, a variation on your Marichyasana. Left hand to the floor, right arm is up, inhale, lengthen, exhale, folding forward. 
You may stay here or take a half bind or a full bind. And then forward, link forward again. Begin to release, make your way back up, and again, wrap the left arm around your right knee and twist. Back to center, counter twist. Back to center, shift the weight to your left arm. Thread the left leg underneath, forward folding, drag and fly. Left hand to floor, right arm is up, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, reaching forward. And again here, if you have a half bind, right hand behind you. Now this one's much more difficult. If you have a full bind, forehead comes down to your floor as a tripod and the left hand comes back behind you and takes a full bind. I'm not able to do it, so I'll just stay with a half bind using the left hand to the floor for resistance to hold me in place. It is hard. Yeah, and most of us are, uh, are not um, open enough in the lower back and also don't quite have the extension to take the bind and then lean to the right and stay in place, right? But some of us who have that flexibility and the extension can use the forehead to the floor as a tripod to hold us in place. Yeah. All right, start to make your way back up. Stepping on the right foot, lift up. Left heel comes back for warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Side angle. Extended side angle. Half bind, left arm up and behind you. Full bind, right arm underneath you. Come back, releasing to the side angle, and then we'll revolve it. Left hand comes down, right arm up to twist. Half bind, right hand behind you. Lengthen out the right leg, half bound, rotated triangle. Raise your right arm up and extend it forward, extended revolved triangle. Right hand comes to the floor, frame your right foot for pyramid. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Right hand stays down to the floor, to the outside of the right foot. Left arm up for triangle. Extended triangle. Half bound triangle. You may stay in this half bind, or if you want a full bind, you can bend your right knee first, take the full bind with your arms, and then once you have the full bind, you can lengthen out the right leg for bound triangle. And then releasing your binds, inhale, come up. Reverse triangle, and then bend the front knee, hands to the floor, right foot, stepping back, plank, in a one breath, exhale, lower all the way down to the belly. Then hands alongside the ribcage, three progress progressive cobras. Inhale, lift up, baby cobra. Exhale, lower arms all the way down. Inhale, lift up a little bit higher. 
Exhale, lower almost all the way down. Inhale, lift up even higher. Full extension of your arms for cobra or slight bending of the elbows if you need that and staying here for about five breaths. Continue to let the shoulders broaden, but also try not to shrug your shoulders, but instead press into your hands and lift and elongate through the sides of the neck. And gently start to lower down and then make your way to child's pose. Seat toward the heels and fold. And lift the torso back up. Take the seat back down. Swing the legs forward. And draw the, uh, draw the right heel in, left heel back, reverse letter S. And then walk your hands over to the right side, inhale, lengthen, exhale, twist, and bow forward about halfway, stopping at the, at the halfway point, inhale again, exhale, twist deeper, bow forward a little bit more. You can stay there or add the extension of the left arm, reaching forward and tractioning the left fingertips to the floor. So really feeling lengthiness to your left side as you rotate and fold. And start to walk it back in, lift back up. Keep the legs as they are. Count to twist to your left. Back to center, right hand comes down. Lift the seat, left arm up and across the collarbone, back in space for the back bend. Then raise your left arm up over the left ear for the side stretch. And then threading the needle, left arm underneath your right and twist. Inhale, re-extend, lift back up. And then take the seat down. Swing the left leg forward and then uh, draw the right heel in closer, intersecting your left heel to the right ankle. Right hand to the floor. So your variation of the Marichyasana. Left arm reaching up and then forward folding. All right? So you can always keep your right hand pressing down to the floor so you're pushing in toward the center. Some of us may have tighter hips and we tend to kind of fall off to the right in this position, right? So use your right hand pressing into the floor to uh, push toward the left. Now, if you want to take the half bind, left arm around the left shin. If you want to take the full bind, right arm behind you. So notice this variation, if you're going to take a forward bind, is much easier than that forward folding dragonfly that we're about to take. All right, so in this one, many of us could probably take the full bind and still fold forward and balance. Now, ideally, if you have more flexibility in your lower back, then maybe you can fold forward all the way. But if not, like myself, you're just hovering in space, doing the best you can. All right, starting to release, make your way back up and then twist to your left. Back to center, counter twist to the right. Back to center, shift forward and thread the right arm, right leg underneath, taking the forward folding dragonfly. You're gonna adjust your left foot to walk a little higher up the right leg. And so again, right hand pressing to the floor to push toward the center so that you can raise your left arm up and forward. All right, so this is your forward folding dragonfly. You may stay here or take the half bind, left arm wrapping around the left shin and keeping your right hand to the floor. Or if you have the full bind, right? Kind of wrap the right arm back behind you. So again, this one's a lot harder to do. But maybe by keeping your right hand to the floor and pushing towards center, you can fold forward a little bit more deeply. All righty, starting to release, make your way back up. Warrior one, so you're gonna step on the left foot, right heel draws back, arms up high for warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Side angle. Extended side angle, right arm reaching forward. 
Half bind, right arm up and behind you. And then if you want the full bind, left arm underneath and taking the bind. Once you have your bind, you want to lift the upper torso, lean it back in space and stack your shoulders looking upwards if you can. If that throws off your balance, right, you can always look down. Now release your binds and come back to side angle. And then let's revolve it. Right hand comes to the floor, left arm up to twist. Half bind, left hand behind you, twist deeper. Lengthen out the left leg for the half bound revolved triangle. Raise your left arm up and forward, extend it, revolved. Then left hand comes to the floor, framing your left foot. Pyramid, inhale, lengthen, exhale, fold. Then keep your left hand to the floor, to the outside of the left leg. Raise your right arm up for regular triangle. Extended. Half bind, right arm up and behind you and stack. All right, then for those of us who are looking for the fully bound triangle, you're gonna bend your left knee first. Thread the left arm underneath, so coming back to a bound side angle. Once you have your bind, now you lengthen out your left leg and then readjust the rest of the pose. Wherever you are, release your binds. Inhale, come up. Reverse triangle. Then bend the front knee, hands to the floor. Left foot, stepping back, plank. Inhale, one breath. Exhale, lower all the way down to your belly. Version two of your progressive cobras. Inhale, lift, uh, lift up, baby cobra, and hold. Press into your hands, lift up a little higher, maybe halfway up. Press into your hands, lift up even higher. So once you come up, right? So the, the, the objective is try not to sink in, but instead, as you press your hands to your floor, you wanna lift the upper torso. You want space between your ears and your shoulders. So try not to shrug your ears, but instead lift and lengthen. And begin to lower and child's pose, nice and slow. Down dog. Raise your right leg up, stepping your right foot forward, crescent moon, left knee comes down. Set up your pose, extra padding to your left knee as you need, and then lunge forward. Now, once you have the lunge, right, let's reach your hands alongside, actively reaching your fingertips toward the floor. For those of us who can touch down, fantastic. If not, just energetically reach down. Then start to rotate the palms to face forward, so you're taking outer rotations through your shoulder joints. Then as you slowly reach your palms out and up toward the sky, take it out in a YV position. Feel that openness and expansiveness. Then interlace your fingers, invert your palms, reach up and back. Then start to release, take the right hand to the right thigh, reach back with your left hand to grab the outside of the left foot, kick back, 
and then reach up and back to mermaid one. Then switch hands, right hand to grab the inside the left foot, left hand to grab the right knee as you twist deep to the right. Then take the left hand to the floor for support. Turn the right toes out, right thigh also turns out and kick back, twisting. Then start to square off your shoulders. Draw the left heel in toward the seat, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, start to fold forward as you draw the left heel in toward the seat. Go into deep quad stretch. Start to release, make your way back up. Turn the left heel in, stepping the right foot back down and turning your right toes back forward, threading the right shoulder underneath the right knee, left hand, grab the right ankle and bow forward. Komodo dragon first. Release your left forearm to the floor at an angle about 45 degrees. You can walk your left elbow a little bit wider toward the edge of the mat. Then right hand, grab the left foot. Shift to your left arm, left knee. Free up your right leg and shoot it out to the side. Komodo dragon. That's right. That's right. That's right. Good. And shoot it out to the side on front of you. Good. Extend if you can. Good. So that's your Komodo dragon. Now, if you can balance and free up your right leg, the right leg shoots back behind you. And that is the tail of the Komodo dragon. And then take it back. Just step the right back down and come back to the shape. All right, so continue to dig the right shoulder underneath the right knee. This time, right palm comes to the floor, left hand to grab the right foot. Lift the right foot off the floor, kick it forward, thread the head past your arm, and extend. Start to break, bend your right knee, step the right foot back down, dig the shoulder underneath, Kundiyasana two, hands to your floor, rotate your left heel back, pick up the left knee, shoot the right leg out to your side, chaturanga arms, shift and balance, flying here in your Kundiyasana two. Step the left foot back down, Kick your right leg up, three-legged dog. Stepping your right foot forward, warrior one. Wrap the hands back behind you, interlace. Broaden, lift up, gaze up. Bow forward, devotional warrior. Shift forward, toppling tree. Balancing on the right foot, raise your left leg up like a standing split. Stay on the right leg and start to stand up, eagle legs, wrapping your left leg over your right. And bend your right knee and fold. Stay with the eagle legs, lift the torso, releasing hands. Kundiyasana one, right arm to the left leg, hands to the floor, balance. Well done. All 
All right, step back down. Left foot comes all the way back. Warrior one. <laughs> Open it up, warrior two. Reverse warrior. Chaturanga dog, down dog. So I'm doing a lot of balancing and movement with you today. <laughs> left leg up. Step your left foot forward, crescent moon. So find the base of the pose first. And once you have your base, arms alongside and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, actively reach your fingertips down as you find your back bend. Then start to rotate the palms to face forward. And then reaching your arms out and up into a wide V. Then start to take the left hand to the left thigh. Reach back with your right hand to grab the outside of the right foot. Mermaid one. Kick back, reach your left arm up and back. Revolve mermaid one, left hand reaching back to grab the inside of the right foot. Right hand grabbing the outer left knee and twist. The right hand comes to the floor, or maybe a little bit wider off your mat. Turn the left toes out, left thigh also turns out. Then as you twist your left, kick your right foot away from you. Then start to square off your shoulders as you draw the right heel in toward the seat, fold forward. Begin to make your way back up. Release your left hand down. You're gonna turn the right heel in Turn the left toes forward, starting to dig your left shoulder underneath your left knee, right hand to grab your left ankle and bowing forward here. All right, so just begin to take the shape, working toward Komodo dragon and the kneeling sundial. All right, you're gonna release your right hand to the floor, right forearm about 45 degrees. Now, you might wanna take your right elbow wider off your mat because you're gonna to have to shift to the right and that'll give you better support, All right? So as you then take the left hand to grab the right foot, you're gonna shift into your right arm, right knee, free up your left leg and shoot it out to the side and that's your Komodo dragon. Then begin to free up your left leg, shoot it back in space, and that is the tail of your Komodo dragon. Begin to step it back to the floor. All right, so your left shoulder stays underneath the left knee. Then take the left hand to the floor, right hand to grab the outside of the left foot, pick up the foot, and as you extend the leg out, maybe thread your head past your arm. Begin to break, step the left foot back to the floor, Kundiasana two, so hands to the floor, rotate your right heel back, 
tucked the right toes under, lift the knee. Then shoot the left leg out to the side, chaturanga arms, shift forward, and balance. Then step the right foot back. Raise your left leg up. Three-legged dog. Stepping your left foot forward. Warrior one. Wrap the hands back behind you. Interlace with the opposite interlacing of your hands. Lift up for ecstatic warrior. Bow forward. Devotional warrior. Toppling tree, tipping forward to balance on the left leg. Raise your right leg higher, bow forward a little bit more with your torso like a standing split. Stay on the left leg balancing, eagle legs. So lift the torso up, wrap the right leg over, bend your left knee and bow forward. Keep your eagle legs, lift the torso, releasing your hands. Kundiyasana one, so left elbow, left arm to outside the right leg. Hands to the floor. Shift, balance, and extend. Well done, good. Starting to break, step the left foot down, right foot back, warrior one. Open it up, warrior two. Reverse warrior, chaturanga up, dog down, dog. Inhale, right heel up. Step the right foot forward to outside of the right hand. Left knee comes down. Untuck your toes. Turn your right toes out. Lizard. Work your uh, forearms fo uh, hands forward, lowering your forearms. If you have more, you can start to flatten more toward the floor. Start to make your way back up. Turn the right toes forward. Half split, shifting back, working toward a full split. So taking preparations first. Step the right foot back down. Walk your right foot forward a few more inches and lunge forward a little bit more. So going deeper into your hips. Shifting back one more time for the hamstring stretch. Then the next time you move forward, you're going to keep light on your right heel. Move the right heel forward, left knee back, right heel forward, left knee back. And if you have a split, make your way into a split using your hands to support to either side. If you want to insert a block or a blanket underneath your right hamstrings or your right seat to help you support, Go ahead and take it. I'll give you a good 
10 to 15 breaths to work through any variations you like. You can just work um, mindfully if you're not in a full split. Just be careful using your hands for support and just gently breathing into the hip opening and the hamstring stretch. If you have additional variations, you can take anything else you want. So for example, you can rotate to your left, side bending over your right leg and coming back to the, um, to the binding of the hand to foot like we did earlier in the previous poses. Right, if you have Mermaid 2 here or Mermaid 1, you can take it again. Seem to be able to rotate into the shoulders for the king pigeon in a split, which is the hardest one of the pigeon and the crescent moon. But for some reason, my shoulders tend to allow me to do that more here than the other poses. So this way I take it. All right, let's start to break. Start to make your way back up. So as you lift the seat, you're going to draw the right heel as far back as you can. Then step the right back down, lunge back forward, switch positions, tuck the left toes, lift the left knee, then grounding your palms to support, step the right foot back, extend in malasana, heels together, toes apart, and then squatting into the pose. All right, this is my favorite way of neutralizing. If you have another way of neutralizing that you like, feel free to take it. And I'll give you five more breaths here to just um, release. If you prefer to take a few hops, maybe a squat into a handstand or a squat into um, a cactus handstand. What if you walk it in a little bit? Yeah, yeah. And then jump from there. Yeah, better. So if, if, theoretically, you want your hands and your feet to be as close together as possible so that you don't have to swing your weight forward that much. You want to be able to just hop enough, yeah, with the spring of that standing left leg to get your hips over your shoulders. And, ah, see? So you just need a little bit more, and then maybe you'll find a little bit of suspension time. That's right. All right, so because what happens is, right, check this out. If you're really wide in the down dog and you're taking the hop, right, there's a lot of shifting of the hips forward and over your hands and your shoulders in order for that balance to happen, right? So if you keep your hands closer to your feet, almost like a standing split, this hop, yeah, it's a lot easier. So keep that in mind. Of course, maybe just to kind of feel for it and just take a couple of simple hops, that's easy, right? That's fine. But if you really want to begin to find that hang, you have to walk your feet and your hands closer together. All right, um, we're back in down dog. All right, lizard pose, second side, left leg up, stepping your left foot forward to the outside of left hand. Right knee comes down, turn the left toes out, walk your hands forward about a foot and lowering your forearms.
And if you have a little bit more depth, flatten toward the floor the best you can. And all this holding here is all about your hip opening, right? And the upper hamstring attachment. So that this is preparing you to get into your split. Hanumanasana. And flexibility poses is all about finding the pose and then holding it, holding it a bit, right? Allowing the muscles to kind of take the shape. All right, let's start to break. Make your way back up. And then turn the left toes forward, tuck the right toes under, and shift back into a half split. So these are the preparations for us to get into the split. So now going from a hip opener now to a hamstring stretch. And step the left foot back down. Walk the left foot a few inches further forward so that when you lunge, you're deepening, it, you're deepening your lunge. All right, let's shift it back one more time into your hamstring stretch. All right, now when you're ready to come into it, right? Be light on the left heel so that you can slide the left heel forward and the right knee can come back as well. Slide the left heel forward, right knee back. So you may notice uh, some difference between your left and right side to so just be mindful to support as you need, right? Take all the precautions, use your hands, right? If you're weaker on one side over another, Maybe you don't want to take like the deeper variations, right? So again, you have a good 10, 15 long breaths here to play. You can stay and just keep working at your progression in your Hanumanasana, your split. Or if you have other variations you want to work with, take it and just try to repeat what you did on the first side the best you can. So again, if you're taking the deeper variations, be mindful about not uh, hurting yourself, right? I believe this is my weaker side, so I'm going to be extra careful. I might not be able to do everything I did on the first side. Say again? Yeah. Yeah, I'm finding it way harder to balance the side, so I don't want to lose my balance. Now, if I had a block, or if, no, I'm fine. Yeah, I don't want to overdo it anyway. I have a second class to teach, so I don't want to <laughs> use it all up just yet, right? Um, so if I had a block or if I had a, a foam wedge or a blanket or a towel, right, I would insert it on my left side on the outer hip, and that would help me help push me back towards center instead of me keep falling off to the side, right? Because right now I keep falling off to the side and I'm losing my balance. So by wedging something to the outer left leg, outer left hip, that will help me center and that will give me more stability. And with that stability, I might be able to come back to the mermaid too. I might be able to come back to the king pigeon, right? So um, I'm not going to overdo it. This is also my tighter side, so I'll just be extra careful with it. I'll work with the split instead. All right, so I think that's about the same amount of time. So let's begin to work our way back. So again, you're going to be light on your front heel. Lift your seat and gently drag that heel back and then step the left back down. Palms flat, tuck the right toes under, lift the knee and then step the left heel back. And again, I like my extended malasana, heels together, toes apart and squat into this pose. And then those of you who like other ways of neutralizing, feel free. Right? Some people just like to come to a down dog and pedal it out. That's fine too. And so again, if you want to take some hops here, it's a great opportunity to kind of just bring movement. So uh, coming back to how to come into a handstand, right? So if you ground your palms, 
walk your feet in as close as you can, All right? So you can always pick the dominant side first and just kind of get the um, confidence on how to use it, right? Uh, how to uh, uh, hop with the, the, the dominant side. So my dominant side is right foot down, left leg up. So I'm going to shift to your tip to my tiptoes, bend the knee. So the left leg is my steering wheel. So I don't want to bring too much movement and swing that leg. Instead, I want to keep it steady and just use it to help me counterbalance. All the hop is coming from my right leg by bending the knee and then pushing and springing. I'm using that leg to help me get my hips over the shoulders and the hands. The left leg is just reaching up and slightly back as a counterbalance. And maybe that counterbalance will help me to stay suspended in air. Now, if my legs are in a different shape, other than shooting straight up, that's perfectly fine. As long as I'm finding balance, right? So for now, just find whatever balance you can on your hands without your feet touching down. In time, as you get stronger, as you get more steady, then you can refine the pose by taking your legs straight up. That's right. Good. Yeah, good. So sh is what? You're not getting as big of a jump and a leap out of it. You probably don't feel as comfortable, right? And that's, yeah, that's the difference between your, the dominance and the non-dominant side. Right? And also, I would say that the top leg, whichever is the top leg, stays fully extended, try not to bend. The same thing is true for the supporting or the jumping leg. Once I take the bend and I hop, as soon as my foot comes off the floor, I want to keep that leg fully extended as well. I like it that way. Some people like to bend that knee. Um, I find the action of bending the knee extra work that I don't need to do. I'd rather keep the legs extended and reaching in opposite directions, and that actually gives me better balance. The action of just bending and extending that supporting, left, um, supporting leg or the jumping leg, I just think it's like extra work that I don't need to do. My top leg fully extended as well if you can. Yeah, that's right. Fully extend, yeah. And as soon as the right foot comes off the floor, fully extend that right leg as well. That's right. All right, let's start to finish up. Let's come back to down dog. <laughs> Pigeon, uh, let's take right leg up. Draw the right knee in, land that shin to the floor. Right, so angle out the right leg, into your left knee further back, lowering your hips, elongate through the spine. And once you're set, feeling nice and level, make your way forward. And then again, feel free to just stay here and work simply in a passive pigeon, allowing breath and gravity to do the uh, hip opening for you. If you prefer to take additional variations, feel free. I'm just going to take a simple back bend with my hands bound to my right, uh, my left ankle. Right? If I take this variation with both hands, I like to grab the ankle and flex my foot. And with the foot in this flex position, actually kind of like hooks my hand in place, right? And as I kick back, it deepens my back bend and also broadens my shoulders. Clavicles, pectorals. All righty. Ah, you're taking jumps? Good. Okay, forearm stand. All right, so here's an opportunity to take inversions again as well if you'd like. So the way I like to teach inversion here is you're pretty much in a perfect setup for forearm stands, right? Your forearms are already down. 
So I like to keep the right knee in, right? You okay? I didn't see what happened. You okay? All right, so as you press your forearms down, you're going to bear weight onto your right shin and lift the seat. Step the left foot in as close as you can. Now, if you step too far, right, you're going to be too close. So uh, you just have to figure out what is a nice um, uh, positioning for you. So keeping my left foot down, I'm going to switch legs right leg up, and that puts me right into the position of coming into my forearm stand. All righty, when you're ready, let's finish up. Walk your hands back in and press it back to your down dog. Walk it out, side to side. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> left leg up, draw the left knee in. Land the shin to the floor. Well, at least practicing with me, um, I think a couple of weeks ago you took a, a Zoom class and then the last time I saw you in person was like a month ago, so. Yeah. All right, once you're set, elongate, and then when you're ready, make your way forward. And then once again, feel free to stay in your passive pigeon and just work here with gravity and breath. All right, so I took the double bind with a flex foot. I'm gonna repeat it here on the side. I'm also going to repeat and try to do my king pigeon here because I didn't have the stability to uh, take the, that um, king pigeon bind. I think I'm a little bit more stable here, a lot more stable. Um, I just want to continue to train my shoulder to kind of get that king pigeon back because I love that king pigeon, but it's been a while and my shoulders don't always cooperate. That's all I got. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. So if you have the props and you want to feel that rotation into it, I think it's great. But it is, for a lot of people, a very tight rotation into the shoulder because you're so compressed in and it's very restrictive, right? And so you have to be careful about creating a space so that you have enough space to rotate the arm in, in, into your shoulder. Yeah. yeah, it's easy to kind of pull your shoulders, right? So it's really important when you take that king pigeon that you go slowly and you kind of feel for it, right? If you go too fast and just think you're gonna be able to do it, you may not be able to and you can hurt your shoulders. So it's really important, particularly for that king pigeon rotation into your shoulder. And so again, going to forearm stand, forearms down. Shift the weight forward, bear weight into your forearms. Step the right foot in, keep the right foot down, left leg up. And so this is your setup for the forearm stand. All right, let's break. Walk it back into down dog. All right, when you're ready, walk your feet forward, torque your hands, and gently take your seat down. Extend the legs forward and lower onto your back. Recline twisting, left knee comes in, left arm out to a T and twist to the right.
Take it back to center, switch legs, switch arms, and twist to the other direction. Back to center, hugging both knees in. And then when you're ready, step the feet to the floor, sliding the legs forward, Shavasana. Find a relaxation, feet are separated, toes turned out. Arms alongside the body, palms face up, eyes are closed, and then letting it all go. Beginning to draw your breath back in, moving your fingers and your toes. Reach the arms overhead, stretching in opposite directions. And then rolling over to the right side and come up to a comfortable cross-legged position. And let's take a non-domination on top. Reconnecting to an even seat, a lengthy spine, shoulders broad, breath deep. And let the neck be free. Inhale from Aum. Hands together in prayer, bowing forward, sealing in practice. Inhale, come up. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here this morning. And thank you for sharing your practice with me. My name is Stephen Chang, coming to you live from 333 Grand in downtown Jersey City, New Jersey. Please visit my website, simhayoga.com, for the hybrid schedule, which is in person here at 333 Grand, as well as through Zoom. You can register for class through ubindi.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, classes are $10, and you can pay through Venmo or PayPal. Payment information on the bottom of the video, as well as my website, simhayoga.com. Thank you again for joining me. See you next time.